Marketing Strategies to Put You Ahead, Law Firm Growth During COVID-19, Episode 76. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, Introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Profit with Law. I am your host, Moshe Amsel. And today we're going to continue with our COVID live stream series replays here on the podcast. Our uh, series that we're uh, replaying here is the Marketing Strategies to Put You Ahead episode. And this is by far, so far, uh, uh, al- along the, the path of these live streams that we're doing, this is my favorite. The, the panel that we had was just a, a, an all-star, rock star panel uh, all about marketing. And there was just value after value after value. So if you're wondering what you should be doing now in your marketing, if you're wondering what are some simple steps that you can take to just capitalize on the situation or to uh, fix a broken marketing system that might not be working right now because of everything that's going on, you definitely want to tune in to this. If you've already watched this live, you definitely don't have to listen to this again, but you might want to because you might pick up some things that you missed the first time around. Our panelists on on this uh, live stream are Andy Stickle, Maddie Martin, Jordan Ostroff, Guy Takalakis, Mark Homer, Bill Hauser, Alexis Katz, and Molly McGrath. So uh, we must recognize some of these names. And this is really an awesome uh, lineup and really excited to share it with you. So I'm going to turn it over to the replay here. This was recorded live in a Zoom call. Uh, the audio might not be what you're used to with the podcast, but uh, the content is amazing. So uh, enjoy it, and I will catch you tomorrow. We are doing a 10-day live stream series helping law firm owners deal with uh, the COVID pandemic. And there's a ton of, of effects that this is having on some of you. Um, we actually should really add a topic to what, you know, what do you do if you're, you have too much business because of this? Uh, I'm actually hearing from some uh, law firm owners that uh, they're having their busiest weeks, their busiest month. Uh, so maybe we should tack on an extra day at the end. Uh, to talk about you know how to how to deal with that increased volume, I'll uh, give a free plug here to Law Clerk, um, our friends uh, over at, at Law Clerk, Kristen Tyler. Uh, they help you with matching uh, with attorneys who are able to perhaps fill in some of that uh, extra work. If you're if you're overloaded, uh, you might want to go over there uh, and see if there's an attorney in their pool that would be able to do some of the some of the extra work if you're just trying to just keep up with everything. Um, today's topic is marketing strategies to put you ahead. And we have the top marketers in the legal space here with us. Um, and uh, just going right across the top, I mean, these are just rock stars. We have Mark Homer from GNGF, um, uh, uh, Jordan Ostroff uh, from Legalese, um, Let's see, Ali Katz from New Law Business Model, Guy Sakalakis from Attorney Sync, Andy Stickle, Social Firestarter, uh, Bill Hauser from SMB Team, Molly McGrath from uh, Hiring and Empowered Solutions, and Maddie Martin from Smith AI. Uh, so these are, uh, these are people who I've come to uh, get to know recently really well, and uh, just an amazing group of people who really, really care about you. And... Uh, they want your success, and that's why they've all agreed to volunteer and be on this panel to help you figure out, okay, um, the economy is crashing down, the world, you know, we're stuck at home, uh, you know, the world is crumbling around us. What can we do today to put something into place, to, to, to put some, some, some fuel behind our marketing to either make something happen immediately or to uh, put us in a position where when this thing is over and people go back to work, we have that stream of business that's already lined up, ready to come in. And I think that that's where we're going to try to focus 
uh, today. Before we get started, I just want to uh, share uh, uh, some of our sponsors. So this wouldn't be possible without uh, their support and being able to, uh, to make this live stream happen. And our sponsors are uh, GNGF, Mark Homer from GNGF is here. Uh, they are uh, a marketing firm that, that really does a rock star job with uh, their attorney clients. They serve only exclusively uh, law firms. So they really know your business. And uh, Mark is the author of a book, uh, Internet Strategies for uh, for your law firm. And you can get a free copy of that book by going to gngf.com forward slash free dash book. gngf.com forward slash free dash book. Uh, we also have Ali Katz from New Law Business Model here. Um, and New Law Business Model, they help, uh, uh, they help uh, train lawyers on ways to serve families and business owners, both online and offline. And uh, they've been doing that since 2006. They have a really good track record. Um, and they, and uh, they teach uh, attorneys how to get paid three to $5,000 per estate plan, how to get paid 750 to $3,000 per month from their business owner clients. If you want that kind of uh, revenue per client, that kind of ongoing recurring revenue for those business clients, you definitely want to find out what they have going on. And you can go and join their Facebook group at Lifestyle Lawyers Club. And when you join, just let them know you came through the Law Firm Growth Summit COVID series, and they'll send you a video and guide that will get you started on how to serve virtually and in this space. And then finally, we've got Maddie Martin here from Smith AI and Smith AI is your virtual reception service, but they're more than that. They are the uh, missing piece of the puzzle that your firm always needed. They're on the front lines. They have a web chat service where they can put right on your website and interact with your prospects, with your customers as they come and try to talk to you on your website with an immediate response there. Um, and on top of that, they're also not able, they're able to not just field calls, but they can even make calls for you. They also do outbound calling. Uh, so there's a whole suite of services that they provide to fill a gap, even if you think that you have this covered because, hey, I've got a receptionist who answers the calls. Well, guess what? In a situation like this, where the receptionist might not be able to answer the call, maybe the receptionist has kids at home, and although she's trying to work, she or he is trying to work virtually, uh, they're not able to be there at the phone all day long as they normally are. Uh, or even if you have a receptionist, there are calls that come in while the receptionist is on the phone, there are calls that come in after hours, they can have you covered in those scenarios. So they normally offer a free 20 call trial, free spam blocking, free CRM integration when you join. Today, if you use a special code, and that code is Smith COVID 19 you can get an additional 20 free, call, free calls, a free first month of the starter plan, which is $140 value, also a free 24-7 AI chatbot, and free setup and installation of that, which is another $150 value, so $290 value they're giving you for free. Um, so basically, you essentially get your first two months free by following um, this, uh, this, pl this plan, taking, taking advantage of this code. So just go to smith.ai, uh, sign up there, use the code smithcovid19, and just uh, let them help you get started with this. Give them, take them for a test drive, take them for a spin, and see how that works out. And finally, um, it brought to you by myself, Profit With Law, the Law Firm Growth Summit. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Uh, now that you're in touch with us, now that you're on our email list, you're going to find out about all the good stuff we have going on. Uh, one thing that we did launch this week in response to the COVID uh, pandemic and, and the things that you're dealing with is we want to offer a low-cost product that's available for the small solo firm owners. So if you're in the zero to 250K range, we, uh, I, get, I got together with Mark Homer from GNGF and Melanie Leonard from Streamlined Legal. And uh, together we are going to bring you information and content to help you with your marketing, to help you with your technology, to help you with the business operation of running your pra practice. And normally that's gonna be 150 a month uh, because we just launched it and it's brand new. We wanna help you out. Uh, we dropped that price to 20, $27 a month, and that's going to be for the life of the product as long as you stay a member. So if you want to join there, go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator, profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator, and you can join the Law Firm Growth Incubator for $27 a month. So 
I actually have gotten really good at this because it took 15 minutes to get through this first bit, the first two calls, and now we're 10 minutes in and we're good. So uh, we're gonna jump right into our topic because I know that that's really why you guys are here, marketing strategies to put you ahead. What I wanna do is, is I wanna just go through our panelists and just have each one of you share one tip, one thing that you think that law firm owners should be doing today. And the people who go last, you're gonna have the hardest job because the good tips are gonna already be gone. But I'm sure that you each have a series of tips that you're willing to share. So we'll just go, I'm gonna go right across the banner here at the top of my screen. There's, it's not, it, it, there's no re rhyme or reason as to why I'm going in this order. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tell you who's, who's going and who's next, and you guys can just jump right in when, when each of you are done. So we're gonna start with Maddie Martin, and we're gonna go from there to Molly McGrath. Uh, cool, okay, so one of the things that I think for marketing is just based on content. A lot of firms are putting out messages that they're open for business, that they're available, they can help, but one of the things that's not being conveyed that I think on a daily basis isn't something that's well conveyed by firms in general is what you actually can do specifically. So people may understand that they've used you or they've heard about your law firm, they may, they may be in your community or on your email list. But if you say, this is specifically what I'm helping others with right now, with respect to revising their estate plans or different matters related to business law, um, different practice areas that maybe people don't know that you are addressing, um, that specific example that you can provide in that same messaging where you're saying you're open for business is super important to put into perspective for people and to get action on these areas of law that you can serve right now that you see demand for or that you want to create demand for. Um, that's really important to make sure that you put it in sort of like layman terms and invite people to ask for those services that you are best suited to provide right now. Awesome. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. So um, I would say, number one, get online and start educating your clients. Everybody is home right now. They're hungry for connection. They're hungry for education and they're hungry for a solution and they want to take some level of action. So our clients, um, we built a simple two page funnel for them. We're driving them to online education. I have a law firm today that has a they have a hundred people coming to their online webinar and it's going to be a little clunky in the beginning of transitioning clients that are used to going to a brick and mortar conference room and a platform like that. But one thing I do know is I've been running an online business for 22 years now. And I know that as we get people through this onboarding process, they're going to, you're really going to have two different levels of your business where people are going to possibly choose to meet with you virtually via Zoom, get their education through a webinar or a web class basis versus going to a traditional workshop versus coming into the conference room. And we're already seeing clients that um, our attorneys are, their clients are saying, wow, we had no idea that this was possible. The connection's not lost any more than it is for you all with us being here on Zoom. So I can't say enough about get online and make certain that you are providing education. You are providing solution and getting a webinar up and running and a web class up and running so you can educate your clients in a very leveraged group format. It is working so very well. And um, we have many different um, instructions you can send out to them in a platform for how to onboard them. But once you get that them to that space, you will have an online platform for your business and you can run it that way in addition to the traditional model when everything kind of goes back to normal, but you're going to have this new, num new, new normal level available for you as well. Awesome, Molly. Thank you. I just was somebody brought to my attention. We went live on the wrong page. So I was fixing that. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I got you and then Andy. So Bill, you're up. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, so I, I definitely have, have some advice here. <clears throat> Yesterday, I held a, a webinar with 575 lawyers uh, who pre-registered for it. Um, and uh, I learned a lot about everyone on that webinar um, who, uh, you know, some are going through struggles. Others are extremely courageous right now and capitalizing. Um, so I, I, there's six tips that uh, I'm giving to law firms right now. Uh, the first is, uh, you know, we can go into all these marketing strategies, but if you're coming from a, a state of fear, 
um, your marketing is only going to do so good. So you have to be grateful. Um, you have to first express gratitude for you're probably spending more time with your family than you ever have before. Home cooked meals. Maybe you've been running outside because the gym's closed. Be grateful. And you're a lawyer. You're not in the event business. You're not a sports team owner. You're not seeing as big impacts as these other industries. Uh, next is to commit to a workout plan. The number one tip, uh, I literally had 90 lawyers email me after this for my workout plan because everyone doesn't know what to do because the gym's closed. Uh, just set up a designated area in your house where you can commit to work out every day. Um, the next tip is write down your goals every day. There's so much distractions out there. You have to stay crystal clear on where you're going regardless of the opposition. Uh, tip number four is turn coronavirus into a lead generation activity. In the last eight days, I have generated 750 leads from a page that I made and an ebook that I made called How Lawyers Should Respond to Coronavirus with Their Marketing. Okay, 750 leads, okay? You can get, get it smbteam.com slash coronavirus. I'll message it to you. It's free and you can model it for your law practice, create a book and then use that as lead generation because it's such a hot topic right now. Um, the next is expand strategically your internet marketing and reduce all waste expenses. That's my fifth tip. So what I mean by that is expand your efficient pieces of your marketing, the, the efficient pieces, meaning what actually has a return and eliminate all the waste and the expenses that you do not need. So we did a full expense audit yesterday for my company, we removed all the stupid expenses, we doubled down on marketing. Cost per click is 10% cheaper right now on Google ads because a lot of your competitors are backing out. So it's an opportunity for you to double down. Um, and then lastly, use this as an impetus to virtualize your practice. Right now, like you're being forced to do virtual case management, e-signatures, you know, virtual consultations. Use this as an opportunity to virtualize your practice, to do all the things that you've been pushing off right now because there's uh, never gonna be a better opportunity than to virtualize your practice right now. So those are my six tips. Uh, so the biggest thing that I think that, that uh, the easiest way for any lawyer to really kind of uh, come out on the other side of this and actually continue to get clients right now while people aren't searching in Google, all that type of stuff, is to basically help people solve problems. That's kind of like, the easiest advice that I can give. And it's, and I've got, that's pretty much like my clients right now. I'm, I'm telling all my clients, like what you guys need to do is you need to figure out who, who is your target audience. Hopefully they know who it is. Um, and what are all the problems that they have right now? Like, what are they afraid of? What are they scared of? What, you know, just what's all the issues that are happening right now and just start creating videos that help them solve those problems. And um, you can share them. You know, a lot of, a lot of people can, you can run Facebook ads to them if you want to, but you can even run them on your, your personal page. And what you do is you do it. I call it PSA marketing because it shouldn't be a sales tip. It shouldn't be a sales pitch. It should just feel like, uh, Hey everybody, I I'm a lawyer. I've got a lot of people reaching out, asking me these questions and you probably, uh, know somebody that has, has these same questions also. So feel free to share this video with them, but I want to set the record straight and tell you, you know, here's what actually is going to happen right now with parenting agreements, or here's what's going to happen with, you know, uh, whatever it is, if, if the insurance company won't, won't, you know, return your phone calls right now to, to talk to you about your uh, medical bills, wh whatever your practice area is. Um, and if you just share people and give them really good information, if you just share, share videos, create content, help people solve problems, then what'll happen is people will start sharing your videos. And we had a client uh, yesterday who, this, who he did two videos and he got like four or five phone calls out of it. Um, and the biggest thing is when you're doing these videos, make sure that they're very, very valuable. They help people solve the problems that they're actually thinking about right now. Um, I used to always hear that, that, that saying, you know, join the conversation that's always going on and that's already happening in their head. And I used to think it was like really, really cheesy, but it actually makes a lot of sense when you think like what that kind of means is that all, all of your current prospects, they've, they've got these like fears that are going through their head. Everybody's got, it. it's basically like head trash, you know? Um, and the information that's in your brain is extremely valuable to somebody that doesn't have that information. So just a simple two minute video that helps that, that tells them the truth or, or how to handle a certain situation is, is worth a lot to somebody that doesn't know the answer to that. So what you do is you create the video, you talk to the camera, like you're talking to a friend. 
Um, and you just say, if you guys have any questions, you know, if you know somebody that, that can benefit from this, please feel free to share this video. And if you have any questions, shoot me a DM or, or give me a call and I'll point you in the right direction. I'll help you out. Um, and that type of thing right now, just helping people solve problems is going to do more for you. I mean, really, you should be doing that all the time anyway, but right now, especially that that will do more for you than, than, than any, any paid ad right now, just because of the fact that, that people buy with emotion and they justify later using logic. So, you know, they've got all this emotion going on right now because they're scared about a lot of things. So if you can help them calm that emotion, then they're going to, they're going to look to you as the trusted source. And then that's, that's when they're eventually going to hire you. Awesome. Andy, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Guy, you're going to be next. And after you is going to be uh, Mark Homer. So uh, I'm going to piggyback some really good uh, tips. You know, my view of this is, is that uh, fundamentals really haven't changed here. Uh, I, I saw some conversations about people saying, oh, well, lawyers shouldn't be selling in this environment. And it's like, well, they shouldn't be selling without empathy and without gratitude, but they shouldn't have been doing that before anyway. Um, I think that the messaging about gratitude is a really important tip, communicating things like we are very grateful that we are operating remotely, that we're still open, that we can serve clients, uh, building that into your CRM messaging, your nurturing campaign messaging, of course, putting that on social, I think is all valuable. Um, empathy, right? So um, I think one of the things that, and Andy touched on this as well, the problems and fears might be slightly different than they used to be in light of dealing with you know, new employment issues, new contract issues. You know, if you go on Google Trends and check out what's going on in uh, bankruptcy search, you know, unfortunately, it's a foreshadowing of things to come. Um, you know, I'm talking to some people in New York where they, if, you, if you help people navigate Chapter 11 or you help people with personal bankruptcy, the service industry is going to be in trouble. Like, it's, it's sad, uh, but this is your opportunity to show empathy, to start, uh, you know, demonstrating your expertise on these issues. Uh, and so if, if you have experience in those areas, now is the time to start uh, planting the seeds for those things to, to be growing as that unfolds. Tactically, I guess to give you, I'm a search nerd. So like the one thing that I would uh, say from a tactical standpoint is see if there's ways that you can implement the COVID schema into your content. Obviously people are searching on COVID. I mean, people want to see stats, what's going on in their local community where there's testing facilities. Uh, there's specific schema markup now for COVID announcements. I think there are ways that you can, you know, you don't want to spam it, but I think there are ways you can weave that into some of your content that'll help you stand out as a, uh, a local resource on the topic. And again, it's no like and trust, just like it always has been. It's just some of the context has changed and some of the fears have changed in the short term here. Is that next, Marsha? Yep, you're up. All right. Um, so I'll uh, let Guy take a lot of the SEO search nerd stuff uh, this round because um, we, we both could go too deep on that probably for this audience right now because I think some of the things right now the other tips were great um, I think one thing I didn't hear yet or if I heard I kind of missed was um, don't forget about your email list if you've been doing a lot of things that the you know, all, all the people here have been saying for years you probably have built us a, a bit of an email list referral partner list right if you're building this content everybody's talking about share it on your email list share it to your referral partners tell them to take this content and help their um, audience, right? So like if you have financial advisors right now, you know, everybody's like, they're worrying about people pulling money out and they just want to provide, you know, something. And so if you can provide like, here's some things you need to worry about for your estate plan during this crisis to the financial advisor, they can send it to their list, right? That's a great thing. And then the other thing on the um, things being cheaper, um, I think not only are like ads being uh, slightly cheaper, but also I'm seeing Facebook volume um, in, in impressions and stuff for the ads that we've been running for months and months for some clients just like totally spiked over the last like week so uh more traffic more leads and everything on like same spend um so i think if you're doing a lot of stuff that you know andy and and other people else talked about in terms of like creating video content creating um checklists and stuff like maddie was talking about like if you're creating some of this content putting a little bit of money behind it on facebook like and i'm talking like 150 bucks 200 bucks a month maybe you know not a lot and we're seeing just massive increases in visibility and driving direct traffic to landing pages uh landing pages you know with this content again i, I second everything else about don't lead with fear don't lead with like scare tactics focus on empathy help uh in times of uncertainty people need lawyers more than ever so this is in this you're in the industry where people want that support and that hope so um you know like give them that 
And I, everybody else has kind of covered a lot and I'm really forward, looking forward to Allie's because I saw a lot of stuff in the chat. So I want to hear what she has to say. All right, awesome. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we're going to go to Jordan and Allie. Allie next, then Jordan. But before we do that, uh, I just want to uh, say something that I didn't say before. At the bottom of your Zoom screen, there is a Q&A button. If you have questions for our panelists, please put the questions in there. We'd love to answer your questions. If you provide questions to us, it helps us uh, make sure that we're covering this, uh, the best content for you on this call. Uh, when you ans ask a question, let us know if you're willing to go live, uh, because if you are, we wanna bring you on and so we can have an interactive conversation with you and make sure that we fully answer the question. Uh, so the Q and A button at the bottom, uh, make sure to press that, type your question in. We got two more that we're gonna cover and then we'll, uh, we'll field some questions from you. Uh, so uh, Ali, you're up and then uh, Jordan. Great. Hi, everybody. Um, the very first thing right now is it's time to stop being a door lawyer and taking whatever walks in the door if you are currently doing that. I would say this is one of the most challenging things that I did in my practice, but one of the things that made the biggest difference and allowed me to build a million dollar a year practice in just three years is because I narrowed my focus as specifically as I could. Back then it was about serving families with young children. And this was at a time 20 years ago when people said, Alexis, you can't focus on serving families with young children with estate planning, you'll starve. They don't wanna think about estate planning, they're too far from death and they certainly don't wanna pay for it. But I knew that they were wrong and that I, as a mom, I absolutely would pay for great estate planning to keep my kids out of the care of strangers and that that was going to be far different than the estate planning most lawyers were doing because the, the estate planning lawyer, most lawyers were doing was not addressing the needs of the families with young children, growing families at all. It was all about elder law and just, you know, a document that I knew wasn't going to work when, if something happened to the parents. So it was really scary when I narrowed down to serving families with young children. I was pretty terrified about it. And I became the go-to lawyer in my community for families with young children and then ultimately nationally. Um, and the families were happy to pay three to four thousand dollars each. Now, not every family, of course, right? But with that, then I was able to um, make my time available to people who couldn't afford it because I had a sustainable practice providing a service that people really needed and wanted to pay for. And the people who needed and wanted to pay for it, I was reaching them and nobody else was. So if you can really narrow down your focus to who you serve. And recognize that you do not have an unlimited capacity to serve clients. You have a very small capacity to serve clients, especially if you're just learning to get virtual right now. So I'd love for each of you to really get clear on how many new clients can you actually serve in April. For most of the lawyers in our program, especially if they're just starting out with us, it's maximum four new clients because they don't have all their systems set up, they don't have a team in place, but great, four clients at three to $4,000 each, nice foundation, then you can you know, build from there. So just get clear on what is that maximum capacity so you don't have this feeling like, I need as many clients as possible, because that is acting from a place of panic. It's not gonna get you what you want. So get clear on exactly how many clients you can serve next month, ideally package your services in a way where that's it. You're only taking on X number of new clients that this next month, and then focus on just getting enough intake to enroll the number of clients that you can serve. And if you don't have an intake and enrollment process right now, that's another really important thing to be working on. I see a lot of lawyers who are out there trying to do marketing and they're trying to do all the things and they're like, my marketing isn't working. But when I actually look at what isn't working, it's not the marketing. It's your intake and enrollment process is not working. And if your intake and enrollment process is not working, you're wasting your time, energy, attention, and money on your marketing. When you know that you can get hired by every single person you sit down with who needs your services, then you don't need to meet with that many people who need your services. And then it makes sense to start paying money on your marketing because you know it's going to provide a return on investment. So we do have to be really wise about the order in which we are creating our systems and doing things. And then finally, 
And by the way, that's why I started off in 2006, first teaching lawyers how to engage clients, how to engage clients. That's why the first thing that I did was invest $12,500 to create a client engagement system in my own practice back in 2004, because I knew I would starve otherwise. Now, I don't teach all lawyers how to do that anymore. I only teach lawyers who want to serve families with the kind of estate planning we do or business owners with the kind of strategic business counsel we do. But if, if you got to learn it from somebody. Your intake and enrollment systems are absolutely critical. Um, and then finally, when you do speak to your community, please don't speak as a lawyer only, but as a human first. And, you know, I see a lot of lawyers out there who are like discounting their services or uh, sometimes I do this myself too, where I'm just like too lawyer. And, um, and, and what we have to remember is that when we lead with our confident vulnerability, people will see us as humans. And so I want to give you an example of that which is that when you come out on social media and start sharing as a leader expert, don't just start sharing about your legal services, but consider starting to share about your own personal process. So for example, the first things that I started sharing before I started teaching was what we're doing for my own family when it came to preparing for the lockdown. I knew a lockdown was coming three weeks ago. So I started sharing what we're doing to prepare for the lockdown. I started sharing that I'm getting my mom's estate planning documents updated and organized in case something she's in Miami. My sister's in California. I'm in Colorado. What if something happens to her? We're not going to be able to get to her. How will we even know what she has? So I started sharing about that first before I started teaching, before I started writing my content articles, before I started inviting people to a webinar I'm hosting, okay? So you could all start doing that right now. Awesome, Allie. Jordan, you're up. You know, Moshe, you were uh, dead on here. The, the longer you, uh, the lower you are on the list, the more you have to rethink everything that you wanna say. So I guess, uh, let me start with, I totally agree with everybody and like literally I had about eight tips before I got to this one that everybody else has put forward. So I'm gonna zig while everybody zagged. Um, I think you want to focus on if you can create a couple moments of joy for people, that's going to stand out so much more with everything going on. So one of the things that we did last week uh, for St. Patty's Day was we sent out um, scratch off lotto tickets. So $2 scratch offs to our 50 top, you know, referral sources, friends, potential referral sources. And the response that we got on that was amazing. I mean, like people posted on Facebook, people called us, you know, and if you don't want to touch the lotto card and send it, then maybe just do a phone call with, you know, referral sources, friends, let them know you're still there, you're thinking about them, see how they're doing. And those nice, you know, five or 10 minutes to kind of be positive for a minute is going to stand out so much more amid the 24 hour news cycle of the sky is falling and the economy's down and everything else that's going on. Awesome. All right, my turn. I saved myself for last, so I have the hardest job. Um, uh, every, everybody shared amazing, amazing stuff. And the only thing that I uh, can add to all of it is piggybacking off of everything that was already shared. You might want to look for opportunities to tweak what your offer is in the initial intake process right now. We talked about making sure that you have a very specific client you're talking to. We talked about making sure that you're thinking about where they're at and you're, and, and you're doing things for them. Uh, we talked about how you're going to reach out to them and how you're going to be there for them right now. Well, the best way to do that is to look at what you normally offer and say, well, is there uh, a better way to position this right now that's going to help them today. And, um, and maybe it's a fragmented piece of what I normally provide, but now it increases the volume of what I can handle up front. So to Ali's point where you can only handle four estate plans, well, what if I focused on just um, helping people establish advanced directives in case they end up on a respirator during this outbreak? And I, and I just go out and I sell that. And now I've got all these people who bought this small service that I was able to provide and crank out a whole bunch of them. And now I can go back to them and bring them in for a consult for estate planning after the dust has settled. And I can now sell them a, the, the estate plan and maybe even provide a credit from what they already paid for that, those advanced directives towards the estate plan. Just an example. Um, another example of fragmenting your services is if you have business clients. Uh, 
do something to help them get an SBA loan, do something to help them deal with their, with their, fi with their financial stuff, deal with their credit cards, provide some sort of service to get the paperwork in order to, for them to be able to apply for these things, to actually apply for it for them, um, at, you know, create that as your front end product where right now I can sell that to them because this is the, where they need me right now the most. And then I can turn around and position them to continue with me for what I would normally sell them for. So if we start to rethink what we're offering on the front end that is an immediate need they have right now and splinter our service into a smaller thing that I can sell them and fulfill very quickly, and it's a smaller price tag so that's an easy yes for them, that's going to create a customer. Once somebody becomes a client, once they become a customer, once there's a transaction, it is so much easier to sell them something else after that. And I think that that's a great way to position ourselves right now. Um, so I have a question from Doreen in the audience, and I just don't know if Doreen wants to come on live to ask the question. Um, so I'm going to ask the question for her. Uh, Mimi, if you can just check with her or Doreen, just post in the chat if you want to come on live and ask it. Uh, her question is, hi, thanks uh, for sharing all your amazing ideas. It is so appreciated. At this time, how often do you suggest that we reach out to our potential client base? Should we be mixing it up between videos and text and or do you have any other suggestions? Uh, so this is specifically, I guess, about um, people who you already have had conversation with or are in, in your prospect list or on, or on your email list. Uh, so I'm going to just open the floor. I know we have a, a, a number of panelists here. So if you're stepping on each other, just figure it out. Um, anybody who has something to share on Doreen's question, just unmute yourself and, and, let's, and let's see if we can come up with some answers for her. I would, uh, I would love to hop in here. I, I, I have Go a ahead, sales Bill. background. Uh, so yeah, I mean, my, my, my take here is like anything goes. Like when I am following up with leads, they're getting texts from me, they're getting text videos, they're getting email videos, um, they're getting screen share email videos, they're getting added on LinkedIn. They're getting added on Facebook. I call, I call this multi-channel multipliers. So whenever I get a lead for my business, I usually have someone on my team personally add them on my Facebook account. And I'm really active on my Facebook stories. Um, and I found that since I'm active on my Facebook stories, I can automatically nurture them. So, um, you know, if you are coming from a place of helping, coming from a place of value, you should not be hiding or, or limiting the amount of outreach as long as you're coming from a service-oriented mindset. Also, my entire company uses Smith AI, um, and we have had an amazing experience with Smith AI uh, doing our immediate response for all of our inbound leads. Um, so once that inbound lead comes in, it's our job to offer them immense value every day with no limitations. Andy Stickle, I mean, he is huge on this with his uh, email nurturing. I mean, he is going to be in your inbox every day, no matter what, because he can, because he's offering immense value. Uh, Andy, if you want to talk about that. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that my, un I email every single day and I also uh, sometimes screw up my email sequences so that people get multiple emails from me every single day. So if that's happened to you, I apologize. <laughs> um, it's because my tagging is wrong. Um, but yeah, what I found is that I get a better open rate and I get a lower unsubscribe rate than the industry average because every single, cause like I email every single day, but I never, well, I could say never, but I very, very, very rarely ever actually pitch anything. Usually it's basically, Hey, do you want to achieve this thing? Here's how you do it. I just recorded a 20 minute video tutorial that shows you how, you know? Um, but that's my biggest thing is that if you can, if you can reach people in multiple places. So like I, I'm a huge fan of video. I record one video and it goes to my Facebook, my YouTube, my Facebook group, um, it goes in email, it goes on my website. It usually goes as like a Facebook remarketing ad if you've ever been to any of my stuff. So like, you're basically like inundated with me. But what I try to do is I try to provide value with everything I do and actually like, not just value, I, like, I, I don't just give kind of the, the, the framework. I, I try to actually give like step-by-step -step instructions on a lot of stuff. So even if you never buy anything from me or never buy anything from that post, you're still gonna be able to achieve some sort of small goal, you know? So I think that, 
that's why I think it's really important to get their email address because if you just do remarketing, then you've got to pay every single time, either Facebook or YouTube or Google or whoever it is. But if you have their email address, you get that one time and then you can reach them for free over and over and over again. And as long as you're providing value every single time, then you're going to be fine. And I mean, you're going to get some people that are un going to unsubscribe. That's always going to happen, but it's a much lower unsubscribe rate and people uh, will get less mad at you when you screw up your email list and email them three times a day accidentally. <laughs> so I apologize if that's happened to anyone. I'm sure it's happened. <laughs> so so, so Doreen jumped on. Um, what, what specific question? Like, I want to make sure we're, we're hitting it. And since you jumped on video, let's, let's get you asking your question here. Yeah. No, I, I, I thought, I think you guys really answered it. Um, but you, you just, Andy, um, led into something else. Um, I, I've been following your lead and I noticed that recently I just got my constant contact report and there were 30 something unsubscribes. Yeah. How do you deal with that? I mean, do I just let it happen? It's going to weave out the ones that aren't interested or what are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, well, okay. So the first question is, uh, is the the content that you're creating is it, is it high value or is it more sales pitches? Um, I I hope it's high value. I mean, I I'm coming from I'm a family lawyer, so okay. I'm coming from a place of um trying to give them like today I just did a video on co-parenting during the virus, what that looks mm -hmm. like, and mm -hmm. I at the end as you, somebody said welcome them to reach out to me and, and I would certainly discuss it with them, you know, not asking yeah. for any dollars or anything like this. So two questions. Uh, first of all, you said you had 30 unsubscribes, but how many people are on your list? Um, over 3000. Okay. And th that's not, that's not that bad. Um, and then what's your open rate? Um, I just got that. It, it was 24% uh, today. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you can have an open rate over 20%, I think that's pretty good. Um, and then obviously there's going to be other things like click through rate and stuff like that, that you can look at, but you're, you, you can't, it's like Facebook trolls. I mean, I run, everybody here has probably seen my Facebook ads and um, I get trolls nonstop, but you know, you just have to remember uh, Michael Jordan doesn't leave YouTube comments on LeBron James's videos. You know what I mean? Like nobody that's doing better in life than you is going to be commenting and stuff like that. So you have to not worry about it. You just delete it. But what I like about the unsubscribe is that when people unsubscribe, they're, you know, it's fine because they're, they're not your ideal clients anyway. So don't worry about it because you've got 3000 people on your list, only 30 of them unsubscribe. Now you've got 2,970. Is that right? You know, so Something it's like, like <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Just keep building your list and you'll be fine. Okay. But yeah, just provide value and you'll be all right. Yeah. To jump on that and combine that with what uh, Ali said before, I mean, that's exactly what it is. You know, you're looking for your ideal client and the more targeted you are about it, the more you're going to know what resonates with them what matters to them. And then if you still get, you know, whatever percentage of them that don't want to follow you, then, you know, then they're not ideal for whatever other reason. Uh, can I speak into the um, follow-up real quick? Who's speaking? Molly. Molly, go ahead. Your headset's not working good. Oh. Well, while Molly's doing that, um, yeah. I can, I just wanted to mention that mo most lawyers are, um, way more afraid of communicating with their audience than, than they need to be. Um, Allie Precept. Allie, you seem to have uh, frozen up frozen. as well. Uh, yeah. I'm going to jump in here real quick and, and just, uh, Allie, if you're coming back on your, your audio is in and out, just give us a moment, let your internet stabilize. Uh, yeah. Doreen, I imagine from the fact that you are a family law attorney that you're probably a very empathic individual, um, that you are uh, concerned about other people's emotions and those unsubscribes have meaning to you um, where, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? I offended somebody. I said something wrong, right? Um, and what you need to understand is, is that when you put on your marketer hat, you have to recognize that a good marketer is somebody who is polarizing, somebody who is able to, at the same time, magnetize the right people to them and push away the people that are not the right people for them. So if your marketing is doing that, if you accidentally brought in the wrong people and now you've done something and you've pushed people away, it's actually a sign of being a good marketer. It's actually something that is good for you. So don't look at it as, oh my gosh, I said something that, you know, they're, 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 I sent too many emails or I said something that offended somebody. No, 
you said something or you got in, in somebody's inbox too many times because they're not the right person for you. And right. therefore you did a good job as a marketer. So unsubscribes are a good thing for you because it means that you're weeding out the people that you don't want to be talking to. And therefore pat yourself on the back instead of worrying about, oh, oh my goodness, I offended somebody. Thank yeah. You. Okay, can I just add to that too? I think that's absolutely true. One thing I think you can use it as a huge opportunity, have your client service coordinator or somebody on your team pay attention to the, the unsubscribes. 30s isn't a lot at all. I agree with everyone else, but go through that data, look at the names and who they are and make certain they're not. I have my client service coordinator look at my unsubscribes and actually pick up the phone where I might say, this actually is a qualified lead. This is a really good person, especially right now. Everyone's getting hammered. They're, you know, confused. Mind says no. So I'll have her pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I saw that you unsubscribe. You know, I just want to check in and see if there's anything we can do to help you. And nine out of 10 times, if they are a qualified client, and I know that are a qualified lead, um, they're like, I'm just overwhelmed. And she'll just say, what can we do to help you? and nine out of 10 times will move forward. So I think a lot of people are afraid of the phone. Right now, people are getting hit with video, getting hit with email. They're all wonderful um, mediums of marketing, but the phone will make you rich and people will pick up your phone call anytime right now. So I have people working on client care campaigns where their client service coordinator or someone in your office is picking up the phone and calling your potential new clients, your warm, uh, leads and then also calling the people that are unsubscribing or and or engaging with you in social and it's working phenomenal right now. So your question around follow up, I would recommend that you do at least three phone calls from a place of follow up because the phone works. Nobody, every, nobody uses the phone anymore. And especially right now, people are dying for connection. They are dying to speak with someone and they're dying for a solution. So if you're paying someone 12, 15, 20 bucks an hour, whatever it is, the return on investment of that is so great. So pay attention to your unsubscribes. I do. I look at them and then I'll compare them each week to see if it's increased because I'm throwing out more content. Like for me, I I, I market to attorneys. That's where my, and they do unsubscribe if I start hitting them too hard. Um, so I know that Tuesday my blog or my podcast goes out, Wednesday my blog goes out. I'm always adding, or Thursday my blog goes out. I'm always adding value add content in my video, but I pay attention to it. And I see if it spikes really high on a week where I'm sending way too much information. And I know that there's something going on that they're getting hit a lot. Like right now, then I, I honestly, I, I pivot and I get my team on the phone. A can I give a tip about I what you can a... do with those unsubscribes? Yeah, do it. So, okay. So once you hit the milestone of a hundred un people that have unsubscribed uh, your list, you should actually celebrate because what you can do is you can take that list, you can put it in Facebook and create a custom audience and then create a lookalike audience and then exclude that lookalike audience from all of your ads because then you're going to find more people that are similar to the people that unsubscribed. And I did that and it worked pretty well. Yeah. Love that. I had a, <clears throat> a quick point. I was at the national trial lawyer summit in Miami and Matt Morgan, son of John Morgan uh, was on stage and they asked about their lead follow-up process at Morgan and Morgan. And they said within the first day when they get a lead at Morgan and Morgan, that lead is guaranteed doesn't even matter if it comes in like, like really late in the day, they will get three texts, three emails, and three calls. They call it the three, three, three. The only thing they don't do three of is three voicemails because they get harassment, uh, you know, threats uh, when they leave three voicemails and it's documented proof of, you know, the voicemail. So uh, the only thing legally, you know, if Morgan and Morgan can get away with it. Uh, you know, they do the three, three, three formula in the first day. So, yeah, I think that's a matter also of like practice area and target audience. So, you know, really know your audience. You know, Guy was also getting at this point in chat where he mentioned give them options. And I think that that's critically important to know the preference of your audience and to look at that trend over time. It may change, it may not always be consistent. Um, but with your practice area, like Morgan and Morgan, I mean, you don't even have to mention, you know, who they are, we all know. Um, and there is sort of like a tolerance to the attorneys who are advertising on billboards and things. There's an expectation that you're going to get that sort of like hammering approach. Um, but if you're in an estate practice, um, 
that's not what someone is probably expecting. So you have to be careful. We talked about this actually in a past webinar that you know Moshe and I did, um, and actually in, in the lawyerist one that happened recently, where we were talking about reaching, uh, that was actually with Mark, not Moshe, um, where we were talking about like, how do you reach your target audience, where you reach them, uh, how you reach back out to them is really important to customize based on their demographic, their income, their approach to your firm for your practice area, et cetera. The only thing um, I'll add, and I'm going to add this, and it's uh, something Maddie added actually with the lawyerist, so I'm going to kind of steal from you, Maddie. But uh, is when you are emailing, um, I like to recommend people segment their, their lists into referral partners versus the regular. Um, and so you can email differently to your referral partners. Make sure you're, um, you know, like offering them value to their potential clients, right? Because that's what you're trying to do. Um, we I talked about that earlier. And then also when you're emailing your list, you know, always ask, just like you always ask for a referral, maybe at the end of a, a case process, whatever, um, always ask, you know, if somebody to forward it on, you know, like, you know, if somebody's interested in this, click subscribe. And typically you know, you'll see a lot of newsletters that kind of say at the top, Hey, if you're new to this, click here to be added to my list. Right. That stuff actually works. You can get people that way and you're not spending really any money to do it. So um, just a good way to kind of keep building the list. But I, I like separating uh, referral partners out and segmenting them because you can think about different content you would provide them um, and kind of build those relationships. Great advice. Thank you. All of you. Awesome. Doreen, any follow-up questions? No, I mean, there's a lot and I thank you. So I'm going to be very busy today and for the rest of the week <laughs> and going forward. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Being just gonna, busy is gonna... a lot better than the alternative. Yes. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> Very appreciative. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm just going to wrap up and, and, and put a bow on this in, in the end with um, don't stop whatever you did to build that 3000 person email list, right? So you've got your existing prospects. Uh, you have to think of unique ways to get them to step forward right now and say, hey, I, I need help. Um, but continue whatever it is that's bringing those leads in. Um, make sure that you keep doing that because you want to keep the engine going. You want to keep, even if, if people are not going to take action today, you want to have that pipeline built so that when they're ready, that business it turns back on. Yeah. All right, um, I, I'm looking in the Q&A box and I don't see any, and I'm, I was starting to type a comment in there, but I'm gonna just say it here. Guys, being afraid to ask a question, that's the first problem with your marketing. Um, you know, if you can't in a forum here amongst peers and, and with experts be able to come forward and say, hey, I've got this question, this problem, I'm trying to figure it out. I mean, you're here for a reason, right? You want this information because your marketing is either not working or you want to make it work better. So if you have a question, now's your opportunity. Drop it in the Q&A at the bottom of the screen and ask it. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to open the floor to the experts and anybody who wants to share something else that you already thought about speaking about, another tip that you haven't shared already um, so that I, you want to share, feel free to, uh, to jump in and do that. So much. I actually have a question for, um, for you know, the panelists. Uh, Guy, I know you, you know you do a lot of like paid advertising and stuff. So we we've switched a little bit of budget from Google to Facebook because just we we're seeing a lot of the the traffic uh, spikes and stuff in Facebook. Um, are people seeing uh, either better conversions, different type of conversions? Are they adjusting paid advertising strategies? Um, you know, because many of us as clients will probably spend thousands and thousands a month on paid ads. Uh, wh what are people doing? And I know Guy, I can start with, you know like specifically ask you, but anybody else. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still kind of like when we're managing media, it's still optimizing for conversion. So um, there have been some shifts. I think uh, I don't know if it was uh, Andy or Bill mentioned it, but uh, there are we definitely or maybe you mentioned it, Mark, um, because competitors are getting out of the auction. There have been some cost and cost per click reduction. So I think that's an advantage. But I, you know, to me, it's like fundamentally, it's the same thing. It's you might have to adjust bid strategy and messaging to uh you know take into consideration people have new fears right now that they might not have had before and so it, you know i think you can't ignore it but um i my big thing right now is is and i put this in the chat is not to operate from fear um i see a lot of vendors and marketing people selling on fear and you know at the end of the day there are some 
genuine things that we should be uh, conscientious of in, in our messaging. And I think back to the messages of uh, gratitude and more empathy, but we should have been doing that the whole time. I think the thing I would say on top from a tactical standpoint is, um, you know, don't make big giant swings right now. Um, more than ever. I mean, I've, we always kind of say that, but um, there's a, there's this mind, if you just look for like managing your business in a recession or managing your business in a crisis, you'll see that historically, you know, people get scared. They pull all their money out of the market. They pull all their money out of marketing. They want to hoard cash. And, and look, that's totally legitimate to feel that way. But uh, my, the other thing I always say, and I remind myself of this as well, because uh, I've got, I'm losing tons of money too. Um, the, uh, the thing to remember is, is that money and business aren't going to matter if we don't come out the other side. And so um, I just think, keep that in mind in terms of planning for tomorrow. Like, yes, there are opportunities and challenges and fears right now, but you've got to be running your business like this is going to be turning around. And so making massive changes to your marketing budget, your marketing plans right now, I just think it's inadvisable at this stage. Agreed. Agreed. I think Can a big we, thing, yeah. oh, sorry, you want to go? <laughs> Yeah, just real quick, Mark, I love your question. Here's what I'm seeing. Um, number one, my clients with Facebook ads, I think it's not a necessarily only the medium, it's a call to action and making sure that it's value-based and it's education-based and that you're driving people to solution and where they can move the needle themselves. So Facebook ads have never been lower right now for even my clients that are in rural Pennsylvania and driving them to a webinar, to a training where there's solution. Right now it's like I hit his cost per click was around 11 bucks two weeks ago. It's under four bucks today. So I think that's number one. And number two, it's working out very, very well for my, again, my attorney clients that are driving people to a webinar is um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is blowing up right now. I know personally that my views have gone over, gone up over like 100% it's from, from Sunday. So LinkedIn is really blowing up and it's working very well for attorneys to do a B2B inbox strategy where they're driving their power partners and their referral source and their referral sources and power partners are driving their clients. Again, it needs to be a value add event. People are online learning right now. They want to be in classrooms and so driving them to a webinar as well. So I think it's the call to action that is the most critical and not using that sacred space, that sacred messaging to be speaking into fear, number one. And, and even from an SEO perspective, it's really great to be speaking into the search terms, but I think, you know, as we all know, subject line is king and making certain that you're offering solution and strategies versus using that valuable. So uh, the other thing that that's important is that when things are going really well, you always want to be talking about the future and you, you know, just, just from a general message, you, you always be, you always talking about the future, how we're going to help you in the future, all that stuff. And then when things are not so good, like right now you shift your messaging to be more about how are we going to be a life preserver? Or like, like and that, that's kind of the, the messaging that, I, that I'm shifting a lot of my clients to is basically, it's not necessarily worrying about the future because people are, I mean, they're worried about right now. So it's just a shift of, of, of message, but the, the first thing people typically want to do is cut their advertising costs when they're not getting new clients, which really doesn't make any sense because if that's the only thing that's going to get you new clients then how are you going to, you know, like why, how are you expecting new clients if you cut all your advertising costs? So, you know, it's just basically, uh, you just have to think about the message and if you switch to life preserver mode, uh, compared to thinking about the future mode, you'll, you'll you'll be fine. And somebody, I think I saw somebody asked in the chat, do Facebook ads work? I think everybody on here would agree that Facebook ads absolutely work. Um, but you know, it's the type of thing you have to under Facebook ads are a tool. Um, you know, I'm a terrible painter, but I don't say that paintbrushes don't work. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's a tool that if you know how to use it and you understand the correct way to use the tool, then you get great results. I can't even draw a stick figure, but I'm not going around saying that, you know, Facebook ads are, or that, <laughs> that, that pencils and, and paintbrushes don't work. And a lot of people do that, you know, and it's just, it's just, you got to know how to use the tool and that's what it is. And, and it starts with your messaging. And, so and just I to think, jump back to something that Molly had said, um, she talked about LinkedIn. I think that's huge now, not only because people have the time for social media more, but also that, you know, you're going to have a lot more people making sure their resumes are up to date or looking for a job or something along those lines. So if you're an employment lawyer and you're not on LinkedIn, last week was the time to start doing it because they're there and there's questions and they're looking for you. 
Yeah, it's also super important to make sure that your referral networks are really strong right now. I mean, we've been talking a lot about, um, you know, marketing that is very ad driven and video and content and email. But I mean, one of the biggest things that you can do for your marketing and your messaging is to really make sure your networks are super strong and that you're participating very actively in all your Facebook groups and on LinkedIn. Um, any sort of like channels that you're in, if you're in a Slack group with peers, make sure that you are dedicating time to presence there because being in front of people especially your top referral partners is more important than ever you want to show that you're alive and well and that you're accepting new clients and really honing your message there so others can distribute that message for you as they see opportunities to refer to your firm yeah so i wanted to also make a point to piggyback off of that um the the original question um there, there's actually a really long not really long blog post that was put out by WordStream, I believe. Uh, they have about 20,000 active Google ad accounts and they mined the data for every industry and how coronavirus affected each industry. Legal is within there. Um, and the stat, which I quoted, was that there's a 10% redu reduction in cost per click, um, but there's only a 5% change in demand, which is not that big of a shift at all in the last 14 days. So the funny thing is all of the smaller firms that are more skittish with their advertising spend are, are thinking of contracting, but we got uh, calls from some of the biggest firms in the United States last week wanting to quadruple or 5X their ad budget because of the fact that this is a big opportunity. We got a call from the fifth biggest advertiser in Texas that he wanted to scale up all of his Google ad campaigns in a week. Uh, and it's kind of like if you look at the S&P 500 right now, now is the time to invest, right? If you look at how that dropped in the last week. Um, so people who are uh, you know, looking to gobble up market share right now are thinking of expansion. Uh, and uh, again, it comes back to that idea I said, put out a piece of coronavirus content. Like Pilma did this. They created the coronavirus survival guide in a matter of two days. Ken Hardison, was talking to him yesterday, created an entire survival kit for it. I wrote a book on it. I'm sure Andy has something he's working on with it. Like, like you guys need to do this. You need to put out a piece of coronavirus content, how it relates to your practice area, and let that be a lead gen platform for the next two to three weeks. Awesome. All right, thanks so much guys for all of that amazing information answering Mark's question. I do have a couple of questions from the audience. Um, it's, it's two o'clock, if you guys need to go, uh, feel free to do that. We'll just stick around with whoever's the hardcore panelists that are going to stick out, stick it out till the end. Alexis, I'm going to unmute your microphone and allow you to ask your question. Go ahead, Alexis. Hey guys, um, I know a couple of you, but I just wanted to ask. I've been developing processes and procedures for an estate planning branch for my firm. Primarily, right now we're doing criminal defense, um, and with criminal defense being mostly non-existent at this point. I thought now is the perfect time to really push that. But because of that, I don't have a lot of income to put into advertising for estate planning. Do you all have any recommendations for how to get out there and get some estate planning? I don't know Molly, it sounds was. like your, your audio was, uh, I don't know if that was Molly. Um, that was, yeah, that was Molly. Molly, I muted you. There's something <laughs> wrong with your audio, your microphone. So um, I'm going to keep you on, on mute until... I'll, I'll prompt you when you got the floor, okay? Um, I think domestic Alexis, violence, I think domestic violence, just a real quick thing on criminal defense. Again, I talked to a lot of lawyers yesterday. Domestic violence is increasing in demand in criminal law right now. So right. it's not completely dead because people are spending time in close quarters. Um, right, but a lot we are of advertising for that. Yep, yeah. So that's my one little tidbit there. All right, I just wanna, I wanna reframe Alexis's question because I think that there's a lot of people here who might be having a similar question. It's not necessarily how do I push into a new practice area or how do I focus on a new practice area, but how do I focus on marketing when I don't have dollars for marketing, right? I think that's right. really the question that's being asked. So I, I would like to go through the, the panelists that are here to see if anybody has uh, tips for Alexis on what she can do that would require more sweat equity rather than cash equity for her to invest in her marketing right now uh, to to build this this new practice area, but for anybody on this on this call, we we've had amazing tips of what you should do. But what if I don't have an email list? What if I don't have money to spend on on ads? How do I now get in front of this audience that I'm supposed to be targeting? Write a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Write a book. 
So, so here's uh, so yeah, what that's pretty clear. So um, the thing that go. I've been, uh, oh, sorry. The thing that I've been telling people to do, and I think this is really the easiest thing, and I think I probably sound like a broken record by now, but if you like, okay, so uh, you said estate planning, right? So there's so many different topics on estate planning that are relevant right now that people are worried about. So again, the biggest thing you can do is tap into emotion. I'm not saying t- tap into emotion to scare people, tap into emotion to basically calm people's fears. So everybody's got all these questions right now. There's a ton of questions that people have. Um, and what you can do is basically, I mean, like literally write down a list of every single topic that you can think of and every single question that you can think of and record a two to three minute video that talks about the question and then talks about the answer. Um, and if you have a story that you can use to kind of uh, t- uh, hammer at home, that's going to be even better because people relate, people retain information better with stories rather than just facts and figures. And then what you do is if you don't have money, you can literally share it on your personal page. Um, and I don't, you know, I know a lot of people are kind of hesitant because they don't want to be selling to their personal page. But if you just come at it at a stand, at, from a, I want to help people and I want to provide value stance, then yeah, exactly. Dot com secrets and expert secrets too. And yeah, Alexis, if you want to read two books, uh, check out expert secrets and dot com secrets. Um, expert secrets first probably. And now, right? and now traffic but, secrets today, right? You what? And now traffic, traffic secrets. secrets is out. Yeah, yeah, I have an affiliate link for that if anybody wants it. <laughs> uh, where I got a bunch of bonuses, but anyway. Um, so what you do then is you maybe do one one video per day and you share it on your personal Facebook post and make uh, your f- personal Facebook page and make sure it's extremely valuable. Um, and you can say, hey, a lot of people have been asking me, um, you know, I'm because I'm an estate planning attorney. I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, my parents are in a nursing home. How do I handle X, Y, and Z if they get sick? Um, so basically I figured enough people had asked me that there's probably a lot more people that that had that question as well. So here's exactly what you need to do and then give some, you know, give as much information as you can. And then at the end you could say, please, if you know anybody that needs to see this, please share this with them. If you have any questions at all, send me a direct message. And then doing that, what will happen is, and it might not happen the first time it might take you three or four or five videos, but I promise if you do this, it will happen where your videos will start getting shared and will start to go viral. Maybe not viral in like a national, like. Uh, chocolate rain sense, but they'll start going viral to like, like friends of uh, friends and friends and friends of, of, of people that know you. And you'll be able to reach tens of thousands of people that way. And what will end up happening is people will start messaging you and start asking you questions. They'll say, Hey, and you'll, you'll start realizing that it's your neighbor's cousin's brother's <laughs> boyfriend's uncle, you know? Um, and then basically you'll get people that way. And that's the easiest way to spread your message. If you have $0, that's, that's what I would do. So two yeah, I mean, things along those lines. Um, one, you're also going to, is that me? Uh, okay. Anyway, um, you're also going to see a lot of other local attorneys will realize that you know what you're talking about by doing those videos. So you'll get a lot more support from referrals. Um, and then in terms of finding what to write about, just go on Google and type in, you know, why do I need an estate planning attorney or see what Google will finish the sentence with when you start typing in some of these questions. And if you do have any of the, um, if you do have any of the specific like SEO stuff, there's a lot of things that you can search for what people are searching for to figure out what questions. Yeah, there we go. Answer the public.com. So all those sorts of things. Yeah. Answer the public's amazing. Where are you guys seeing the answer the public thing? Is it over here in the chat? I just put it in the chat. Yeah. It's a website called answer the public.com. And basically what it does is it pulls from Google auto suggest. So if you search like uh, advanced uh, healthcare directives or something, what it'll do is it'll go out and pull every single question that people are actually searching in Google right now on healthcare directives. So you can start looking at, you can start coming up with different ideas for topics that people are actually looking for. That's awesome. I want to jump over to uh, Molly real quick. Alexa, sorry for jumping on top of you. Molly wants to give us an answer. She had some audio issues. We're going to, I'm going to unmute her uh, and allow, um, allow her to, to speak to, to, to this question as well. How's that better? Yes. Okay, good. Hi, Alexis. Um, you know, number one, I would say definitely traffic secrets, dot com, dot com secrets, et cetera. You can go into our uh, legal marketing flow Facebook group. We're teaching a 10 day program. Today's day nine um, for estate planning and elder law attorneys specifically. People are very active and they're so abundant and generous sharing their PowerPoint presentation, sharing their videos, sharing their copy everything that they're using and you can absolutely model it. Um, They're very, very um, supportive and abundant, number one. Number two, 
driving people to a webinar has been working very, very well through LinkedIn and Facebook and everything else that everybody has been saying here. But education right now is working so incredibly well, as we're even seeing with this event here, you know, having 70 plus people here today, people are hungry for information and connection. So I would say that. And then also, and, and I know you're down the street from me, if you want me to help you with some of the chamber things that I'm seeing, if you're not involved in the South Metro Chamber right now, they just sent out an event looking for speakers. There's so many opportunities in our chamber right here, um, all up and down 25 is, uh, I think there's probably like 15 different divisions that are so active. And they're looking for a lot of panelists and speakers right now. Thanks, Molly. I keep forgetting that we're so close. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, can you put that link to the, the Facebook that you were saying yes. there, or is it already in here? It's, I'll send it to you. Yeah. I'll okay, send perfect. You Thanks so much. Also, it's good to see you. <laughs> yeah. And I actually am dropping it in the chat right now. And Molly, I just requested access to your group. I don't know why you're keeping it under wraps and not telling anybody about it. Legal <laughs> marketing flow, guys. Uh, just join Molly's group. She's got an awesome class going on in there. Uh, and I put a, group, a, a, a link into the, uh, into the chat. So we had another question that was, um, uh, Alexis, is your question answered before I, uh, before I move away from it? Yes, those are really great tips. I appreciate it, guys. All right, awesome. Um, one last thing that I want to just add on the the uh, if you don't have money for marketing, uh, what you want to do is is you want to uh, work with what you have. And if you don't have a social media presence, you don't have an email list. What do you have? You probably have um, contacts that you that you know, right? So the the most basic level of marketing is networking with people. Now, networking itself is going to be a very long and tedious process. Probably not the fastest way to get results. But if you start to network strategically with uh, other professionals that don't compete with you, but do have the same clients as you, then you can collaborate with them to get access to their client base. Now, why would they be interested in collaborating with you? Well, let's say you go to a financial planner and you say, look, I'm doing estate planning. I want to get in front of your clients. I want to, I want to bring value uh, to the table. I don't have much to offer. I don't have the funds. I don't have the contacts. I don't have anything. What I will do is, is I will take care of coordinating the entire thing. You don't have to do anything other than give me access to your client list to send the invitations to. Then we'll do a, a, a joint uh, lunch or, or a session together and we'll, uh, I'll share value at, with your people. So they're going to get value out of it. And it's going to create another touch point for you to bring them back to the table, to bring them back in the conversation, potentially uh, be able to increase your business with them. Also open it up to your leads, people who haven't moved forward with you. And now this might be the thing for them. Now you create this joint event and now you have, suddenly you now have an email list. You now have a list of people with their phone numbers. You now have um, people who you can now say, hey, follow me on social and you have a social presence. So if you don't have anything, you got to find a way to start somewhere to get access to people and just put in the effort yourself to make that happen. And there's no time like the present to start creating that social presence. You think any of us, uh, myself included, uh, started with 500 people on our email list, started with 1,000 people as you know, followers on social. Even today, the Profit With Law page, um, you know, our, our video is being seen, our, our live video for this is being seen um, hundreds of times, some, one of them maybe even over 1,000 times, and I've got 400 people that like the Profit With Law page. I don't care about the numbers. I'm just putting the stuff out there. We're just, I'm just there for the people that I, that I serve. And eventually it will build on itself and you'll have the, the clients coming in from it. It is a longer game, which is why I think you need to think lower on the ladder of instead of just putting stuff out there and hoping for the best, actually create some strategy that's going to allow you to find the people that you want in a more strategic way. Um, yeah, it's either it's either more effort or more money, right? I mean, right. there's two options. Like, if you don't have money in the beginning, you have to use more effort. Like, what what Andy and I have done on on YouTube. I mean, he probably has triple the YouTube videos I do. I have maybe 170. He probably has 500. Um, is like we're just that that's an effort side of the equation. But the ROI from YouTube, like by being a thought leader and constantly putting out information and things that you're an expert on. Andy can speak huge on this because he's pretty much dominated YouTube and legal marketing. Like, like I didn't expect a clear ROI from that. 
but it takes so much freaking consistency and discipline and sweat equity and it's possible and it takes you know you know andy talks about the the four month dark you know i think it's longer than four months but it's really for me is more eight month dark period of doing content marketing investment um before you see any return but it's just constantly capturing your knowledge and putting it out there in a fourth grade level to where people who aren't a lawyer can be helped by it. So Andy, I'm sure you'd have a lot to talk about on that. Yeah. Well, what's cool is that like, so it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a different strategy right now. Cause right now everybody's really coronavirus focused and how do you, how do you do it right now? So I'm actually not even adding a ton to my YouTube channel because with my YouTube channel, I try to focus on stuff that's evergreen. That way, if I create a video today, it'll make me money, you know, tomorrow and next week and next month and next year, you know, and that's kind of the secret of how I've gotten up to 600 videos. Um, but, uh, I forget what was even the original question. <laughs> just like, how do you, uh, how oh, do you like, oh, yeah, do yeah, grassroots yeah. marketing? Yeah, the, sorry, say that again. It's just grassroots marketing. Like, you know, how yeah. do you do it without you, a budget? You know, another, another thing you can do right now that's really, really underrated is help other businesses out. And it doesn't matter what the business is. If you go to a restaurant all the time, you know, start giving shout outs to them being like, Hey everybody there, you know, this business right here is doing takeout and tag them. And you know I mean? Like stuff like that, like it's all small and it's not stuff that's going to like nothing. It's not like a magic bullet, but if you do stuff like that on a consistent basis, I, I truly believe that that all goes in the karma bank and just like helping other people in general, especially now. Cause you know, you might do that for 10 businesses and maybe one of them will respond and share you with their, with their people, you know, cause they're not all going to do it, but you know, it's just, it's just all kinds of stuff like that. You're not going to hurt yourself by helping other people. That's the biggest thing. And if you don't have money to give, then just do it with your time, you know, and just help people wh however you can. Yeah. So I'm on the um, executive board for big brothers, big sisters for central Florida. And it's so funny that the longer this goes, the more I've taken a lot of the stuff that we do as a nonprofit and moved it over to the law side. You know, a lot of what Andy's talking about where you give those shout outs to people or things like that. I mean, it's going to mean so much more in our current economic crisis, the situation going on, you know, whatever you want to call it, just being genuinely nice to other people is going to make you stand out. Yeah. Cause no one else is doing it. Like, just look at what, like do what other people aren't willing to do. That's, that's, that's really, I mean, that's kind of like the secret to what I've done is I just, I just see that our other people aren't willing to do a lot of the stuff that I do. And that's how I've gotten up to 600 videos, you know? <laughs> Well, you're one of the only marketing companies that actually follows the information that they're going to tell clients to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's too, I, I drink my own Kool-Aid, but you know, <laughs> no, I, I mean, it as a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. Alexis, any, any other questions on this topic? I, I just want to know if we can move on to the next question. No, I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So, um, we have another question that I want to address uh, bill Jordan. Andy, you guys got a few more minutes to hang out. Yeah, yeah. I've got until three, so I'm good. All right, awesome. Well, I'm saying two thirty. You can be sure this is going to be over in twelve minutes. Um, but what I can do is I just want to really quickly just uh, for those of you who are still here, those of you watching the replay, this is made uh, available to you through sponsorships, and I want to make sure that you just check them out. So GNGF is a marketing company. They have a free book for you uh, all about getting uh, 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 leads through the internet. Uh, Mark Homer wrote that book. You can get it at gngf.com forward slash free dash book. Uh, Smith AI is your virtual receptionist service. They have a ton of amazing stuff that they can do for you. Answering your phone, outbound calls, uh, a, uh, a chat bot on your, on your website and monitoring the chat bot. And what they're doing is, is they're throw, throwing in an extra month for free. They're throwing in 20 extra calls for free. They're throwing in the free setup of the AI chat bot, $300 extra value if you sign up using this code. And that is Smith COVID-19. Smith COVID-19 is the code. Sign up through that and, uh, and you'll get basically your first two months free. So you can take them for a spin with really no risk. And then you're going to be very happy you did and you're going to appreciate it. And you're going to send us all thank you notes. Um, Alley Katz from New Law Business Model, uh, they help attorneys figure out how to uh, charge three to four five thousand dollars per estate plan, how to get seven hundred fifty to three hundred three thousand dollars per month in uh, revenue from business owner clients. If these are num numbers sound like something that you're interested in, you got to join their Lifestyle Lawyers Club Facebook group, Lifestyle Lawyers Club Facebook group, and uh, get access there. 
and uh, that's where they're going to share all of that goodness with you. And finally, uh, myself, Mark Homer, and Melanie Leonard partnered together to open up the Law Firm Growth Incubator, and that is intended to give you the support that you need, Alexis, for you and for anybody else on here that is doing your own marketing, you're doing your own stuff, you're a solo, you're new, you're zero to 250K in revenue, and you just need help in, on, on running your business, uh, your marketing, as well as your technology. Uh, the three of us are collaborating to create that support for you. Go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash incubator. And this is a, a rare opportunity for you to join this. It's brand new, $27 a month. It will be $150 a month. Uh, we opened up that price for the first 30 people. There are already 15 of those taken. You only have 15 spots left. If you don't take it, you're gonna lose your opportunity to lock in that price for the life of the product. So. Um, the question that, uh, that I want to address here is somebody was asking about technical stuff. How do I learn the technical stuff? I'm doing my own marketing. Um, how do I navigate learning how to create landing pages, set up an email client? There was a lot of back and forth. Some of this was answered in the chat, but I just want to address that here for somebody who's in the early stages, they're doing their own sweat equity. Um, how much do they have to learn? Um, and how much can they do you know, that, that doesn't need to be that fancy? I think that people try to, try to make everything perfect and they try to show up as a, as a marketing guru and a marketing wizard and they probably overcomplicate the process. So uh, if we can talk about what's the bare bones minimum for somebody who's creating, um, <laughs> who's creating uh, this stuff? So a bill is putting up their click funnels, uh, and I, I we, we can talk about specific a specific platform, uh, but more importantly, I want to talk about what is what is the actual process that they need to understand and need to follow to capture those leads and get somebody interested. Um, I even have. Um, I even had somebody who come to, come to me who wanted to sponsor these events and they were like, here, here, this, here this is the pitch that I want you to do. And the pitch was selling um, a, a high ticket product. And I was like, listen, th this is on a free call that's going out to people. You're not selling an, a, 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 you know, a five to $10,000 product. What you need to do is you need to offer something for free that they're going to sign up for. And then from there, you're going to have their contact information. So let's talk about what that process looks like. I don't know who wants to jump in here, but I know that you all have a lot of experience with this. So go ahead, Bill, go ahead. Just to keep it very simple, <clears throat> you want to collect people's information by offering them something. And then you want to push that thank you page to an ask for a free consultation. I think that's probably the simplest advice. Like, I don't know, like getting traffic, you can get all wacky and crazy with it. Um, but like, just don't let the technical side be an excuse, like just literally a two step funnel, just start there and don't like literally your logo, a headline, a picture of something they're going to get when they download it, three input boxes. And then as soon as they press enter to download that, they're brought to a page that says, Hey, thanks for downloading my X, Y, and Z schedule a free consultation. That's it. I would just stop there. And, and a lot awesome of the, the production value that you need is right here. You can take video, you can take photos, you can write stuff. I mean, if you can use your phone, y your camera on your iPhone is going to put a better picture together than anything short of like a $1,500 camera. So utilize a lot of that stuff. There we go. Now we're seeing the, uh, that's literally where I film all of my videos. Here's an iPhone holder. There's a circular light and that's what's produced 170 videos. The other thing is before, like to get them into the funnel, don't like, again, you always want to think about what's the problem and then advertise the solution to the problem. So if you're going to give them, I mean, I like, I like creating an ebook or a cheat sheet or white paper, whatever you want to call it. It's the same thing. Um, so what you want to do is you want to figure out what's the biggest problem they have. Um, and I, I like to use a how to without statement on the title. And basically that's how to, and then insert the thing they want without, and then insert the thing that they fear. So uh, for example, my book, which is targeting lawyers, is called How to Get More Law Firm Clients Without Losing Time and Money or Getting Screwed by a Marketing Company. Because I know that every lawyer wants more clients and every lawyer has a story about losing time and losing money and getting screwed by a marketing company. So that's, that's my lead magnet. Is, and I don't, I don't, a lot of lawyers want to kind of advertise themselves and talk about you know, how many cases they've won and all that type of stuff. But really, at the end of the day, you got you to gotta accept that people don't care about you. They care about themselves and they care about what you can do for them. 
nobody wants to hire a lawyer. They want to hire a lawyer for the ben or they want the benefit that hiring a lawyer brings to them. So uh, what you have to do is you have to sell that benefit. It's like um, selling the vacation uh, versus selling the, or selling, if you go on vacation, there you go. There's the book. <laughs> selling the uh, resort rather than selling the plane ride. You know, the, the, the travel agent never talks to you about the plane ride. They talk to you about the resort. So if you're a bankruptcy attorney, it, it, your message should be how to, how to have freedom from your debt. Nobody wants a bankruptcy, but they want freedom from their debt. Um, and you can even go further than that. You can say like, you know, um, if, you're, if you're talking to a specific audience, like say you're talking to like uh, middle-aged men, for example, you know, you, you, they, they want to get rid of their debt because they need a bigger house because, you know, their kids are sharing a bedroom and are always fighting and their wife's driving them crazy because she wants a bigger kitchen, all that type of stuff. They don't want a bankruptcy, but the bankruptcy is the tool that they need to get the thing that they want. So if you can keep that message and basically have all of your stuff thinking about what is the end goal that they actually want and then advertise that, then they'll download your thing. Then they'll, then they'll, uh, you know, then they'll give you their email address so they can download the thing. Then they'll hop on a consultation with you. So that it's, it's all about messaging. Awesome. Uh, the one thing that I want to add is just once you've got this set up, so let's say you're using ClickFunnels, using lead pages, or you have your web guy make you a landing page, you've got this simple funnel set up. Um, don't forget the easy stuff, your social media profiles, uh, the, every, your signature of your emails, everything that you're doing that people are, they, they want to know how to get in touch with you. So when when you, when you post on social, understand that somebody who sees you for the first time, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to be, who is this person? They're going to click on you and check out your profile. Your profile has to direct them to this free thing because if it's for them, they're good. That's the action they're going to take. They're less likely to pick up the phone and call you. They're less likely to send you an email, even though you put your phone number and your email there. But if you offer them something for free, they're more likely to click that link and download it. And now you've got their information. Now you can start that conversation, even if they don't take that free call on the next page. It's called a profile funnel. Make sure you have all your stuff on your personal profile because they'll eventually get curious about who you are. Yeah. That's really good if you're posting in other groups also. If you can find other groups that have like, so for example, if you're a family law attorney and you can go into like parenting groups and just go in there and literally just provide value. Um, there's a, most people know who Gary V is, um, Gary Vaynerchuk. He's got a strategy called the dollar 80, dollar 80 a day strategy or something like that. And, and basically the idea is that you go on Instagram you go on Facebook groups and all these different places and you join these conversations and you leave your two cents and you do it 90 times a day. So, um, I do that quite a bit. I mean, and that's actually, even now, like it's something I'm actually getting back into kind of where we are now. So you're going to see me commenting on a lot more, uh, posts in Facebook groups. I'm, I'm very active in the maximum lawyer group. I've got my own group. There's a couple other groups in them also. And if you just provide, if you just provide value as comments and things like that, then people will eventually get curious about who you are. And then they'll look up and they'll start messaging. I've got, you know, I've probably got 20 unread messages in my, uh, in my uh, Facebook messenger right now that I got to get to. Yeah. To that point, Facebook has even announced um, that they have seen their ad, tra their ad traffic go down um, and the news feed traffic go down and they've seen the traffic in groups go up exponentially because of what's going on with COVID that people are just spending more time in Facebook groups. So if you can be present in there, now's the time because that's where people are hanging out while they're stuck at home. I just, I want to make a very, media, oh, sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was just telling me, I was going to say be a uh, producer of social media, not a consumer because a consumer mm. will, uh, suck the life out of you right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Just one quick final point. I know we have a minute um, is notice like literally the last 20 minutes of this, like we all didn't talk about coronavirus. I just want to point that out. Like, so like there is a world where we don't talk about coronavirus that, that does exist. We just were in a warp hole, you know, talking about content strategy and, and the coronavirus word wasn't brought up for, I think, like 15 minutes. So I think we set a record there probably in the U.S. Um, so, like, we need to stay focused on our own 24 inches around us. We need to stay focused on the tried and true principles of marketing and block out everything else. And if, if you're going to talk about coronavirus, create content on it, but don't gossip about it. That's the only point I wanted to make.
Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. So, all right, folks, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you so much to our panelists, especially the ones who stuck it out for the extra 30 minutes. Uh, and, for, and for our attendees, the ones who stuck it out for the extra 30 minutes, you guys get a gold star. Uh, replay will be sent out to anybody who did register for, for this call. Uh, we do have seven more topics uh, <clears throat> that we're going through. And let me just run through what they are real quick. Tomorrow is employees, how to keep them. After that, working from home with kids. Then we've got tools and technology for law firm survival, managing a cash crunch, getting new clients today, projects you've always wanted to get to, staying healthy and performing self-care. So we've got a great lineup still of calls. We're doing this daily all the way through the end of next week. And I invite you to register for them at profitwithlaw.com forward slash COVID profitwithlaw.com forward slash COVID if you want to get reminders and also the Zoom links to be able to attend those calls. So uh, thanks, folks. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll catch you on the next call. If we didn't get to your question, feel free to message that question to us uh, directly. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get you the answer that you need. Take care. Have you been enjoying the show? We sure hope so. To make sure you never miss an episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button in your podcast player app. Next week, we will be back with more valuable resources and ideas on how to break the mold and take your law firm to the next level.